Uh, I'd like to welcome Assistant Professor Cody Allen from the Department of Agric Agriculture and Biological Engineering here at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. He is an expert in agricultural automation, including engines and powertrain electrification. He's a re researcher in machine systems modeling analysis and controls. And prior to joining the University of Illinois faculty, he was a guidance navigation and control engineer at Boeing. So I think he'll bring that uh, experience both from the industry side and as a researcher here on campus in this discussion with our esteemed guest from AGCO, Seth Crawford, who Cody will introduce. Thanks, Cody and Seth. Thanks, Laura. And welcome everyone to the second fireside chat of the day. I'm not sure if it's a, a campfire or a fireplace. I guess it depends on your imagination. Um, hopefully we're as, as good as the first one. So my name is Cody Allen. I'm assistant professor in the Department of Agricultural and Biological Engineering. Uh, as Laura mentioned, I work on uh, control alg algorithms and sensing solutions for machine systems, everything from powertrain level to uh, machine level, where it more focuses on the agronomic and productivity aspects of precision ag. So, you know, based off of my interests, you can probably imagine that I am thrilled to welcome Seth Crawford to this fireside chat. Uh, Seth is the Senior Vice President of Precision Ag and Digital for AGCO. He has had a really fascinating career and a very successful career in agriculture focusing on a, a wide variety of applications uh, and instead of going much further into that I'll, I'll start with that as my first question topic uh, so Seth welcome uh, I'd love for you to share more about your your background story thanks Cody it's great to be here and and really great to be as part of this uh, group I know you have a very strong participation in this event. And I think that highlights the, the belief we all have in what uh, the University of Illinois is doing with your, with your efforts here. As far as uh, my background, you know, oftentimes I, I get asked the question, you know, how'd you get into the, the agricultural equipment business? And the reality is I was born into agriculture. I was uh, born uh, in a, a farming community in Southwest Minnesota. And my family's been farming in that part of the, the world since the 1870s. Uh, so we're approaching a 150 year anniversary of, of farming in that part of the country. And to be a farmer in that part of the world and to settle in that part of the world, you have to, be, you have to love farming and you have to be a hardy individual uh, because the family lived in a sod house for the first winter and, and anybody that's been on the border of Minnesota and South Dakota uh, knows that the wind never stops blowing. It's more a question of which direction is it going to blow from rather than will it uh, continue to blow across the plains. And, and it snows sideways because the snow doesn't really uh, gently fall. But uh, grew up in agriculture. Then as I went off uh, to my university days, at first I thought I wanted to, to go a different path. But by the time I finished my bachelor's degree and started on the master's, uh, decided to get a master's degree in agribusiness. And then from there was hired into the uh, ag equipment business. And then the next uh, 24 years are our history. And, and here we are. Oh, that's, that's fascinating. I, I also grew up on, on a farm in Southern Illinois, not as much wind, but some similar, some similar challenges, Before I'm today. sure. Um, it, it, may, it makes me think of a, a couple days ago, I had an interview with a freshman student who reached out. He has no agriculture background. It was for a gen ed class. He was interviewing people in agriculture. And he remarked that it seems like everybody he talks to has an agriculture background that works in agriculture. And I think he almost viewed it as a, as a barrier to entry, right? And, and that really struck a chord with me. That, uh, so I tried to do a kind of a paradigm shift and made me think a little bit about it. I, I think it's just that agri people in agriculture are so passionate about it that any, any, any taste they get of agriculture, whether it's growing up on a farm or just being involved in, in some sort of activity, they fall in love with it and they become agriculture people, right? Um, anyway, that mindset just made me, as we strive to get more uh, interdisciplinary uh, views in agriculture, uh, and just I want to keep that in mind that the, that background's there because uh, I'm sure in, in your organization and precision, which is again precision ag and digital, you're constantly recruiting multidisciplinary backgrounds. Can can you describe a little bit what 
what Precision Ag and Digital encompasses for Agco? Yeah, so, so for us, the Precision Ag and Digital organization includes our precision planting units, so our retrofit uh, business, uh, taking what many would consider a perfectly good piece of, of machinery and taking it to a whole new level of, of productivity. Uh, and then it also includes our Fuse Connected Services and Technology Organization, which uh, fuses our what we call an ingredient brand. So it feeds all of our equipment lines, whether it be Massey Ferguson, Voltra, Fent, uh, or the Challenger brands with the, the precision ag technology that they need to help our, our customers realize the maximum productivity. We also have uh, the digital customer experience platform uh, that is our dealer and customer facing applications that uh, really what we're aiming for there is we want to serve customers the way they want to be served. And this is something we started a few years ago, really started ramping up our investments in this area. Uh, and then the, the, the COVID pandemic hits and we've only uh, stepped on the accelerator uh, because any thoughts about how quickly the industry would go digital uh, I think we're, we're increased tenfold uh, in the last 12 months uh, because the customer acceptance and our, and our traditional dealer uh, acceptance has really ramped up quickly there. And then finally, in, in our organization, we have our, our parts and service uh, capabilities uh, within the precision ag and digital organization. And some people question, well, why, do, why is that part of it? Because that seems very traditional. But the reality is in today's environment, when you have a, a connected customer and a connected fleet, you can do things to get in front of uh, product issues and support customers better than we've ever been able to do before. And we can preempt uh, any downtime issues. And, and with customers that are operating with such tight windows, as far as when they need to put the seed in the ground, when they need to apply the, the, the chemicals to control uh, the weeds, the bugs, the, the fungus, and when they need to harvest, those windows are incredibly tight. So being able to leverage our technology fully to support the customer over the entire life cycle is critical for us. And so that's why we've brought it all under, under one umbrella. And we think it's a great growth opportunity for Agco and, and truly living to be farmer focused, uh, which is our strategic intent. Yeah, now time is money when it comes to agriculture, right? Especially crop Absolutely. production at certain times of the year um, and it varies so quickly, right? You go from a little bit of a lull into, um, you know, things are on fire. So yeah, you mentioned all of Agco's different brands and I think a lot of people don't realize, this audience does likely, right? But as in general, a lot of people don't realize all the facets of agriculture that Agco uh, Agco encompasses. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's quite a broad company for sure, and that's one of the things we pride ourselves on is we're a pure agriculture company. You know, we focus on the entire crop cycle with our machinery brands. Uh, we we also have the retrofit business where we're really focused on all brands that are in in use around the world, and then we have our grain and protein business, which you know, some of those uh, operations home turf is in your backyard. Uh, there in, in uh, the middle of Illinois. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it, they're, they're global uh, brands, but they very much have the roots in the local communities around the world. Hmm. Yeah. I guess because of that, that widespread application and, and, and your particular role, you have a very unique viewpoint. I mean, probably as unique as a handful of people in the industry on, on adoption trends when it comes to precision and digital agriculture technology. Can you describe some of those trends in the past and moving forward or what you see the future trends to be? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, over the, the last 20 years, you know, we've really come a long way. Uh, you know, the, the, what was new technology uh, 15 to 20 years ago with you know, just getting you know, the basic guidance products in place, just doing some some basic documentation of, of your harvest and, and of your, your applications as you went through the year. You know, that was all new and, and you had your early adopters at that time. Well, we for sure progressed along the, the technology adoption curve, the S curve there, uh, to now be at the point where most of this technology 
uh, that, that we saw with the early adopters back in, in around 2005 to 2010, it's really become uh, part of the base machine in, in, in most production agriculture areas of the world. Um, and, and I'd say the US and Canada, Australia probably adopted the earliest, but now Europe and, and South America have really uh, picked up as well. And so now what we're, we're seeing is that, you know, now that we're in the, 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 the majority of customers out there, they, their expectations are a lot different. And they want it built into the machine. They want it embedded. Uh, they want it to be uh, highly reliable. They expect the support to be consistent with the other products that they have on their farm. Uh, they don't want to go to third parties for that. And they, they, it, you can really look at adoption rates and, and almost uh, graph that out in line with how easy is it to use. If it's easy to use, uh, you see the adoption. And, and I know at one point, there was, there was the thought that, oh, only the, the tech savvy young farmers uh, will do this. Uh, but that's been proven, I, I think, completely wrong. And it, it's amazing to me to see the automation that's been adopted because in many farms, you know, the, the, the hired help during the key seasons, they're getting in the, the, the age range of 70 and 80 years old in some cases, but, but they're good, reliable help but they, they just need a little help to, to keep going. And these technologies allow uh, individuals to stay in the cab longer, to do the job right pass after pass, and, and to really ensure that we're delivering the results that our farmers expect and demand. I think that's, that's pretty exciting for, uh, for the farmers who are struggling to find the, the help in the rural areas. And as we all strive to feed the world, it, it gives us more predictable outcome. Uh, which we're all searching for. Yeah, in order for something to be useful, it has to be used, right? <laughs> so if it's sitting there on the machine and or it, and it's just sitting there, it's not it's not working much. Especially mm -hmm. and there's there's the operator that might be able to use it, the, the the main owner of the operation. But you're right, those 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 other seasonal workers that may not have the day to day interaction with the technology still have to be able to use it. Um, is there an ROI? I mean, ultimately it comes down to, you know, putting on my, my farmer, my farmer hat, it comes down to ROI, right? You care about making money per acre and what it costs per acre, and you'll just figure out whether you're going to use the technology. Do you see the ROI play changing in the near future when we when we're getting more data, we're using our data better, we can quantify ROI on some precision ag technologies that may not have had as much adoption in the past, like maybe some variable rates technologies. Yeah, for sure. I, I believe we're, we're making progress on the ROI side. And I think farmers see that as well. Some of the, the recent studies that I've seen come out, you know, their, their views generally are not directly aligned with, with all of the equipment and chemical and, and seed companies that are out there. We all believe that you can get more out of them. Uh, the technologies, but what I think is is a great challenge for all of us is to look at what we believe is is theoretically possible, and then what's the customer's perception, and then how do we close the gap? What's holding us back? And and I heard the guests on the the uh, previous segment talk about that. Hey, there, there's a big tent. There's a lot of opportunity here uh, for for many players, and I think that's. It, almost all of the companies in the segment, we're all in this to help the farmers sustainably feed the world. And I think that's very motivating. And one of the things we find motivating is this, this opportunity. If we say we can get 5% improvement out of a technology and the customer say, well, I think I'm getting one to 2%. How do we take those next steps? And, and one of the big steps forward in the last few years is uh, the combination of connectivity of our machines with uh, better bandwidths as far as you know, moving from 2G to 3G to 4G and, and now 5G uh, cellular technology so we can transmit more data. And then just the overall processing power that's out there and the analytics capabilities that are out there. When you bring all of those together, when, when we used to be able to manage at the field level, and then we got down to the acre level. Now we truly believe we can get down to the plant level. And so if you're planting 35,000 seeds in an acre, you know, you, you've got you know, 35,000 
uh, opportunities to get it right. And so with, with all of that data capture and data processing, we think we really can get down to see where are we doing this really well and where can we make improvement? So every plant essentially becomes a test plot, which for many agronomists, that's been a long-term dream. But I right. think that's becoming more and more a reality than it's ever been before. And, and we look forward to that opportunity. And, and uh, so yeah, I, the technology is coming along, plus the data capture, transfer, analysis, uh, all is coming together and, and it leads to a very bright future. Yeah, of course, with more data, comes issues or, or concerns around privacy, right? There, that's always mm -hmm. a big thing in, in, in agriculture. Right? You walk the line between respecting data privacy versus you know, in, possibly increasing yields for the greater good, right? If you could alleviate some of that. Um, and so I'm sure that's a topic as well, a, a bigger topic than maybe we want to dive into right now. But. Yeah, well, absolutely, Cody. It's, it's one of those where, you know, first of all, the customer, it, it's the customer's data. They, they have to consent to, to share that data, to, to transmit that data, to, to, for us to store uh, that data. And we, live, we take that very seriously. Uh, and, and we have an organization that actively works to protect that data. And we also leverage a lot of third party uh, consultants to, to, to check and double check you know, how secure we are. And then obviously we're keeping up with the, the, the global standards around uh, data privacy in terms of, you know, if, if a customer wants to be forgotten in the system and have everything removed, we're, we're ready to do that. But I think our, our challenge overall, uh, you know, at Agco, but also as an industry, how do we continue to build the trust with our customers so that they will capture the data, how they will share the data, uh, how they will allow us to uh, anonymize that data and evaluate it, to be able to feed back actionable insights to them on you know, how they did in their own operation and what improvements they could make and, and how they potentially did against others. Uh, not on a one-by-one -one basis, but on an anonymized aggregated basis. How did they do and what could they improve? Because I've never met a farmer that didn't want to be the one bragging about their yields uh, and, and didn't want to do better. And, and we want to enable that. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's spot on. Well, I, as we get here towards the closing, I, I, I do want to, I want to thank Agco in general um, and, and express the, the appreciation that the University of Illinois has for Agco uh, and their presence in the University of Illinois Research Park with the Agco Acceleration Center. Uh, I, I think there's, there's a lot of benefits in that sort of academia and industry collaboration. I, I think you hopefully agree on that. Um, but yeah, absolutely, Cody. We've been part of the Acceleration Center for for the last few years, and we started with our grain and protein uh, organization, but we've expanded it. and And what a what a great program uh, for Agco and for uh, I, I think the university. And for the students we engage, and that's what's uh, most exciting, I think for, you know, thinking back to my days in, in university uh, to now, to see the, the, uh, the incubation of ideas, uh, trying to bring students in very early, and whether they're an undergraduate or a graduate student, getting them exposed to career opportunities uh, and, and helping them see that. Because it goes back to the point you made earlier about you know, a, a student coming in and saying, do I have a future in agriculture because I'm not a farm kid? Uh, to me, the answer can be absolutely yes. What I always look for in that situation is, do you appreciate uh, agriculture? Do you respect farmers? And if you do, you have a very bright future uh, in agriculture because you want to help them succeed. Uh, if you don't have a high regard for, for farmers and agriculture, it might not be the right, right path for a student, but you don't have to be from a farm to be passionate about helping farmers feed the world. And those are the individuals we're looking for. And the, the uh, Innovation Center at the University of Illinois has helped us. Uh, we, we call it the Agco Acceleration Center. It's really helped us advance our efforts to be more innovative and, and, and advance as a company. Yeah, it, it seems like one of those rare win-win-win 
things in, in life. So uh, absolutely yeah, fantastic. Well, I believe that's that's our time. Uh, so I, I want to thank you again, Seth, for, for your conversation and, and the insights. Uh, Laura, back to you. All right. Thanks, Cody. Thank you so much to Seth and the Agco Acceleration Center as a great part of the research park where they employ students working on lots of new digital technologies. Thank you to Cody for leading that discussion and hearing more about how Agco is advancing, advancing the industry.